Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Planet IMEX, the October edition. My name is Natasha Richards. I'm the Senior Advocacy and Industry Relations Manager for IMEX. And it is my pleasure to introduce today's final session, The Secrets to Mindful Living. During the session, I encourage you to use the chat as much as you like, but ask that you use the Slido platform for questions for our speaker. I will monitor the questions, so please do forgive me if I look away occasionally as I'm working with two screens. You can access Slido to the left of the video feed on a desktop or below the video feed on a mobile device. Our speaker this evening is a coffee enthusiast, loves to watch the British drama Midsummer Murders, has a 15-year-old son, Luca, that competitively races carts and has a singular goal to be a Formula One champion. And she has a passion for essential oils. It's my pleasure to introduce Lee Papa. Hello, Lee. I have to unmute myself. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Natasha. Thank you to Planet IMEX, IMEX Group. This is so exciting for me, and I am thrilled that all of you are joining me for this last session of the day. Usually I'm the first session of the day, so let's, we have so much to cover that um, I'm gonna just get started, but please uh, feel free to interact as Natasha was talking about and um, participate because that's what we wanna do here. We wanna engage. So, Yes, Lee Papa, The Secrets to Mindful Living. Are you ready for these secrets? I know I am. First and foremost, like Natasha was uh, saying earlier, that we are going to be doing a Q&A at the end, so definitely hang on to those questions. I'd love to do those kinds of uh, Q&As and engagement and uh, support you in your personal journeys. Um, and also, we are going to do some drawings. So we have, where's my book? The book that came out this year, A Year of Mindfulness for Beginners, it's 365 days of mindful journey, a nice little companion for you. And when we do those drawings, you're going to um, pop, pop me an email so that I know where to send it. And we'll talk about that again soon. My story in a nutshell. I was thrilled when I found this little nutshell. <laughs> I'm not going to go into a whole lot of details because there's so much for us to cover, but it's important to give you an idea about my background. Way back when, I was going to say before 2008, I wore stress like a badge of honor. And those of you who have experienced my sessions, you know that I use that terminology quite a bit. Stress is not a badge of honor and we don't need it to get the job done. But at the time, I did. And at the time, I looked externally for seeking well-being and joy and peace and didn't realize at the time that all of the drama and the trauma and the chaos that was going on in my life was a direct reflection of what was going on inside me. And so that is the important part. And in 2008, I had what is called a near-death experience, and that triggered a whole new awareness, a whole new level of consciousness where I knew that everything that was happening in my external world was a direct reflection of what was going on inside me. And that set me on my journey of well-being, mind, body, and spirit. And it is why I am so passionate about what I do so that I can support all of you to find that peace and well-being and thrive in no matter what environment that you're in. So, as always, take what resonates and leave the rest. Because if something is not sounding like truth for you, it may be just a seed for later. Or it may be for what I would used to say, your neighbor, somebody sitting next to you, or just someone else that's on, uh, on the call or on the uh, session. So just take and let it wash over you, but really grab hold on what resonates. So this particular session, uh, when we wrote out what you were going to learn, we talked about 
the foundation in mindfulness. And some of you may already know, but we're going to reinforce that today. We're going to do basics. Then we're going to move into some secrets. And then we're going to do the Q&A. And after each one of those segments, we're going to do a drawing. The first two are for the book. And the third one at the end of the session is for a 30-minute coaching session with me. Basics. We're going to talk about intention, where we are right now in the world, what is mindfulness, and what can we do about it. So what is intention? Intention is what you would consider maybe a goal, right? You set an intention, you set a goal, but it's so much more than that. It is your goal with emotion. It is your goal with deliberate uh, intention, deliberate goal of the highest and best expression for yourself and everyone. The power of the emotion is what gets you there. So these are my intentions for this session and for you. My intention is to partner with you by providing mindfulness-based tools to ease your path individually and then professionally, to offer nurturing concepts, which in turn provides opportunities for you to do the same in your personal life and professional life. So I do that with much emotion, and so it is. So where are we now? Where are you individually? And so I'd like you to, um, oh, sorry, we're going to launch a poll. Yes, we are. <laughs> Natasha, we are on uh, slide eight, and we're going to launch this poll for you. And it is, what challenging emotions have been the hardest to deal with during these current times for you? And then we're going to get to the answers of, of what you all are feeling. So where are we now? You might be feeling uncertainty, right? You might be feeling polarization in the world. You might be feeling some resistance and some anger. Some people are feeling aggression, uh, fear, fear, fear all around you, right? Almost feeling like you are getting pelted with these emotions. They're not coming in from within you. They may be externally attacking you, if you will. You might have physical issues, agitation, suffering, hypersensitivity. There's so much more. And I'd love to know what it is that you're feeling. So so you go through, what you got? So we've got uncertainty is very um, popular. Fear, isolation, anger, anxiety, limitations, unbalance violence, mm. depression, clinging to certain outcomes, a lack of control, uncertainty, a loss of control, yeah. feeling unbalanced, um, feeling anxious, feeling defeated, mm. um, some really, really strong emotions. And I think we can all identify with that in yeah. these times. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Natasha. Um, and yes, all of those are feelings that we are all feeling at some level and they're very real and we honor the fact that we're feeling them. But in mindfulness practice, that's where we shift things a little bit. And let me tell you what I mean by that. Oops. Sorry about that. So we're going to back up. All of those feelings that you're feeling, they have a name. They have a name individually. We could label them all of those things. And when Natasha was giving me the results of what you were feeling, I was getting chills. I was feeling the actual frequency, the vibration of those words in my body. And I could either take them in and, and, and feel the depth of those emotions, or I could step out of them and acknowledge them for what they are and the power of what they are and understand that they are all the same thing. What are they? They're contrast. When we use our words um, deliberately, we understand the power of them. And so all of those feelings, I'm not devaluing the feelings because they're real. 
But the more that we feed into those feelings, just like me feeling the energy, do I take that in or do I step outside in that mindfulness perspective and understand that they are contrast? Okay. And then we move into understanding how contrast is our biggest teacher. It is brings us the biggest amount of wisdom when we truly understand contrast. It's an opportunity for us to look at things in a different way. So now, what is mindfulness? Mindfulness at its simplest form equals awareness. Awareness of your thoughts and your actions and the world around you. This is the big part, the drum roll in non-judgment. So you see, that's the trick, right? We can be aware of all of those emotions that we were talking about and we can lean in and be the participant and get whipped around being the participant. And that is a tornado that is a recipe for more of the same. Or we step back being the observer in mindful practice and we understand, oh, I see, it's contrast. It's the contrast that is happening in the world. It's the contrast that's happening in my life. And so you become now the deliberate driver of your life. That awareness provides that for you. Now, what is meditation? A lot of times people think meditation and mindfulness is the same, and it is not. Mindfulness is a much broader philosophy of living, and then meditation is part of that process. It is the tool that allows you to be more mindful. Meditation allows you to still the mind. It allows you to go within and find that inner peace that dwells within you. It allows you to surrender. So what can we do to begin this shift? to shift away from these feelings of isolation and anger and um, fear, right? What can we do about it? Well, we can choose. We can choose to embrace a mindfulness lifestyle that will bring you to a place of a, found, a foundation that's strong in wellness in a foundation that is strong in higher consciousness, that is strong in your awareness in non-judgment. Because when we are in judgment, we are in duality consciousness. And duality consciousness is a resistant energy. One or the other, one or the other, one or the other, one or the other, right? And we're feeling a lot of that right now, one or the other. When we go beyond duality, when we go beyond diversity, we find unity and we must do that within ourselves first. We must go and quiet the mind so that we can heal our emotions so that we can rise above them, honoring them, but rise above the frequency of those lower frequency emotions and find that peace and well-being no matter what's going on in our external circumstances. And that's where we navigate from and we find that peace and well-being. And we understand that with that comes change. And so tomorrow I have a session on Ride the Wave of Change, which is very important to honor and understand change. So we must focus on what we want to create. And when we do it from a place of mindfulness, we utilize this practice. And that's what it is. Meditation is a practice. And mindfulness is a practice. We don't conquer it. We don't achieve it. We don't overcome it. And that was kind of where I came from. I was that type A personality and it was always pushing, 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 pushing way back when, right? The next thing, the next thing I'll get through. I'll take care of myself on the next thing or when this is finished. But it's an integration of your life with a foundation in mindfulness that brings you that peace. So the effects of a mindfulness practice are so far reaching. The ripple effect is you can't even imagine. It is life changing. And people will tell you when they're in practice that it is life changing. Seems like the holy grail and that 
you know, too good to be true. But the truth is, this one is. And it just takes you. It takes you to deliberately walk in that space of mindfulness practice, in that space of awareness and non-judgment, in that space of self-love and self-care. And when you do, the rewards are great, beyond great. You can disregard stress, right? It's not that nothing will ever happen to you. It's how you handle it. So you may have a program of all of these years of your life of handling stress a certain way. You know, when I was growing up, my mother handled stress by ice cream. <laughs> we went and we ate, right? And so that pattern followed through into my adult years. When I had stress, I ate. I stopped doing the things that supported me in my well-being, which ended up when I was doing the things that I was programmed for, I dipped further into that tornado. But now I no longer do that because I became aware and I'm in mindfulness practice. And so I'm deliberate with my wellness and my well-being. And let's say I choose and have a cupcake or an ice cream or something like that. I don't beat myself up about it because that's that judgment piece. I deliberately choose. I make that choice. You are the driver of the ship. You will sleep better. You will retain information at a higher rate. So all of the time that you invest in your well-being through mindfulness and meditation practice, it's like you're putting all that energy into an escrow account and then everything else happens more smoothly. So it's not that you don't have the time. You absolutely do have the time because everything else runs smoothly when you invest in yourself in this matter. So it's time, Natasha, time for our drawing one. Whoever so is, is waiting for the name, <laughs> Lee, just waiting. I'm waiting for the golden ticket. Yes, whoever puts in the right number between one and 10, and it's three. Do we have a winner for the book? I'm waiting for lucky number three. Ooh. See if that name comes up. Uh oh. Drum roll. <laughs> we are waiting. Waiting. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Come that on, everybody together. Melodic, I have to say. <laughs> Do, 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 do. do I don't know if we have a winner yet? We're just waiting. Perhaps it was a tie. Ah, oh, we have a winner, yeah. and it is Michelle Crosby. Wonderful. Congratulations, Michelle. Just going to need you to shoot me an email at lee at leepapa.com with your mailing address information, and I will get this out to you ASAP. Well done. So moving on. Secrets. I'm going to do a time check for myself to make sure that I am in good shape. Oh, I got to move quickly. Um, so the secrets. There are so many. And I'm just going to touch on these because we don't have a whole lot of time. But I could do on every single one of these items, I could do a whole nother session. But let's move into Nikola Tesla's quote. If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Highly recommend you doing some digging into Nikola Tesla and this phrase and understanding vibration, frequency, energy. It's science. It's not woo-woo. Um, but think of it from this perspective. Everything is energy and energy can't be destroyed, but it can be changed for the better. And so when we think that we are energy and we find out that our thoughts and our words spoken, this amazing tool that we have of our voice holds a frequency. I'm sure you've been on the receiving end of someone spewing something negative and how you feel like it's attacking you. That's an energy. You're feeling that energy. You've also felt the reverse when someone is loving you and praising you, how amazing that feels in the body, right? It's energy. So we must be very deliberate with our words because they're either poisoning us or they're nourishing us. So we consider 
a new perspective that experiences are always happening for us, not to us. And that may be a little challenging to embrace at first, but when you start really embracing this mindfulness practice and living it, you understand the truth of that phrase. Experiences are always happening for us, not to us. And do you see the good in every situation or are you always looking for the bad? And I try not to use the words good and bad. I like to label things more as optimal or less than optimal because sometimes that changes, doesn't it? Something might be good one day and the next day it might not feel so good or vice versa. And what are your beliefs about life? Do you believe that life is hard, that everybody's out to get you, that you have to work super hard to even eke out a living? Or do you believe that abundance and prosperity is the name of the game and that it comes easily with ease and grace? Do you believe that you are in the optimal health and well-being and that the universe is always vying for your highest and best? If you do, then that is what you will attract. So self-observation, 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 it is the answer. It is the answer of going within and understanding. We don't ever teach, really, when we are growing up and through school that the self-observation is the name of the game, that investing in yourself in this way provides such value that it is, um, I, I don't know, I just get, like getting an A in self-observation, I think, is more important <laughs> in this time in our lives than ever before, that we start to fall in love with ourselves. We start to find that we are our own best friend, that there's so much to love within who we are and not that old pattern of resisting who we are or hiding who we are or wearing masks or not valuing who we are. So the self-observation piece of the mindfulness practice is a great secret. So, hmm. When you are not in mindfulness practice and you're not aware and being the observer, who's running the show? Who's in control? The external is in, the, is in control. That external that's whipping you around with all these very dense emotions, that's in control. The fear's in control. The violence is in control. The contrast is in control. But when you are in mindfulness practice and you are deliberately choosing your thoughts and your feelings and your emotions, then you're in control. So who is responsible? Yeah, you are. I know it's not so popular sometimes to say I'm responsible for everything that happens in my life. It wasn't popular for me when I was creating all the drama and, and all the chaos in my world many years ago. It was exhausting being her, I promise you. And when you embrace a mindfulness lifestyle and you embrace meditation and you live this daily, you will look back on the younger version of yourself, even from weeks ago, even days ago, with such compassion, because you will know it was just exhausting being that person. No, it was for myself. I look back at the younger version of myself when I wasn't awake to this awareness. And I, I feel sadness, compassion for her. It was exhausting being her. And yet the answers were so close. The answers were within. But I wasn't giving myself the time to quiet my mind. But you can. You now have the secrets. You can do it. So you own the outcome. You own the deliberate action. You own the self-love and the self-care, and that will lead to self-mastery. So the impact of continued contrast on you, us, and the planet. Yeah, it's not pretty. Inner turmoil, a lot of it that can lead to chronic emotional issues, can lead to chronic Physical issues can also lead to dis-ease and illness. It can lead to unrest and violence in the world. And it can actually lead to energetic eruptions 
like earthquakes, volcanoes, natural releases, because the planet feels that. But we can start with us, and it's important that we start with us. We can't fix anything externally until we go within to make those changes within. And when you live it, you breathe it, you are the example of it, it is a ripple effect. And it affects all of those people within your sphere of influence, your family, your friends, your business, your attendees, right? And look at how fast we can change the world. So be aware of the access points of where you're allowing this energy, this frequency, this vibration that is less than optimal into your being, right? What are you listening to? What are you watching? What are you engaging in? What are you speaking? What are you thinking? This is all up to you. You are in control of this now that you know. So let go of what does not serve you, my friends. Let it go and release it and embrace and feed what does serve you, what serves you in the highest form. Love, peace, forgiveness, acceptance, kindness. Feed this and you will bring more into the world and into your world of the same. So I've got some intentions and affirmations for you. I am open to higher consciousness. Love and kindness is the way through. You might want to take a picture of this screen. <laughs> I see the future and it is magnificent. And I say this every day. I know everything is working out for the highest and best for all. And I am in the process of living a mindfulness-based life with ease and grace. Always add with ease and grace at the end of everything that you're affirming. Because sometimes change can be abrupt. Sometimes it can feel abrupt. But when you're affirming and you're creating ease and grace at every point, that's what you will receive. Reality reveals the creation, whether you decide it or not. And what this means is is look at your external world, look at your life, because whatever it is that is being created, that is a creation from within your energy field. So if there's chaos, we need to go deep in, take a deep dive of that self-observation, take a deep dive of that mindfulness, that awareness and non-judgment, so that you can bring more peace into your life, so that this external then gets changed, gets shifted and reveals the new version of what's going on within you. The power of intention and focus is what deliberately creates your reality, allowing the flow of the universe to provide and the manifestation without judgment or resistance, allowing it to flow. And again, when we talk about change tomorrow, we're gonna to tap into that a little bit. Thus, when we do the inner work, you deliberately send a signal of awareness out to the universe, intentionally deciding the focus and the direction of your reality. We create our reality. So change your perspective and you change your outcome. And Miss Natasha, we are ready for drawing too. <laughs> Yay. So we're going to do another book. First person to put in the chat the correct number between one and 10, we're going to do another book. And let's see what people are choosing. Let her go. Pop it in the chat, number between one and 10. Number between one and 10. Number between one. Oh, look at that light that's coming in. That's on this side. We see the light, right? <laughs> we see the light, my dear, we certainly do. <laughs> And okay, I'm going to go ahead and do it. The first person to choose four is our winner. Who chose four? Who is our winner for number four for our drawing number? Two? Well, it's one of our Debbie. very only. Oh, fantastic. Debbie, Debbie Newton. Newton. 
Fabulous. Send me your mailing address, please, Debbie, and I would be happy to send this off to you. So now we are wrapping up that segment of secrets and hope you jotted some secrets down for yourself and let that kind of settle in. And you're taking your deliberate action to create the life that you desire, that that is steeped in wellness, well-being, peace, joy. Yes, no matter what is going on exter externally, our responsibility is to go within and claim our own vibration claim our own frequency, and to deliberately take action with meditation, which is funny, deliberately take action for meditation, which is the antithesis of action. It is the surrender, but choosing and mindfulness practice. And you will see a shift in your world, your immediate world, and the world as it exponentially reaches worldwide. We become what we create. So how can I help? Do we have any questions? We're looking for questions. We're looking for questions. Let's see. Natasha, I think I'm going to need you to come back and see if there are any I'm questions. Back in the room, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a brilliant question um, from Tui. In honor of World Mental Health Day on October the 10th, what are some simple mindfulness practices that we event professionals can start today? And she says, hi, Lee. Hi, yeah, Tui. It's so good to hear from you. My dear, oh, giving you a nice big energetic hug. Um, great question. Um, and actually for any day, but specifically for that day, you know, they're probably always the same. Um, there is nothing more powerful than a meditation. And for those who are beginning a meditation practice, um, stay to the end because you're going to get a little free, free direction, free gift on the meditation front. Um, by doing a guided meditation, if you're new, is very helpful to allow that kind of that mind chatter to ease as your mind focuses on the voice and the music. But doing meditation doing meditation with an intention, right? Remember, intention is the powerful goal with emotion of peace, of peace, of optimal well-being, of abundance and prosperity, of unity, of a world that we have never seen before. One that is one with love for all mankind. So, that simple thing will be the most powerful thing that you can do. And you can do it multiple times a day. And then I always like to throw in some gratitude, right? Because the more that we're grateful for, the more that the universe gives us to be grateful for. So I'm grateful for you. And thank you for that question. And Lee, we have another lovely question. Natalie says, I tend only to meditate when I need it. <laughs> Do you have recommendations for doing so on a more regular basis to maintain a mindful well-being? Yes, and what a great question, Natalie. Thank you. Um, and I laughed because it's human nature. It's human nature that we wait until we're depleted. Um, it's a program, right? We wait till we're depleted and then we need the fit quick, quick fix. So we're feeling great, we're doing exercise, and then we it falls off because we're feeling great, we think we don't need it. We're taking our supplements, we're doing you know all of these um, superfoods, and then we're feeling great, and then we fall off and stop taking them because we think we don't need it. It's the same thing with a mindfulness practice. But um, what my suggestion is, is that you have a goal to go to. First of all, meditation is not about how long you meditate. It is about your consistency. So it's a very important thing to deliberately choose. First thing in the morning, it's like any habit that you start. First thing in the morning, you make that the priority because it is your self-care, your self-love, which in turn ends up allowing you to give more out to the world. So the meditation that you're going to have access to, if you haven't already downloaded it, is the six minute um, waterfall chakra wash. Six minutes is all it is. So if you do six minutes every single morning, 
I would say you have six minutes to gift yourself. And if you don't, then we need to have another conversation. But six minutes at least will get kind of that practice going. And then when you are feeling amazing, and that could be only a couple of days, you're going to consistently do it. You're going to make it a habit over two weeks, a month, and you're going to know how good you feel. Now, you probably will fall off one day because it's a part of the process. Instead of beating yourself up and saying, oh, I didn't do it. When you remember, do it. Six minutes, right? So someone always asks me, when's the best time to meditate? I say, when you meditate. Because if I said only the morning or only the evening, if you didn't, if you missed your morning, then you would wait till the next day, right? I'm going to say, so attempt to do it, make a plan, put it in your calendar, set your alarm, whatever it is to get you on track that you're doing that six minute meditation every morning. Or if that doesn't work for you, maybe it's 10 a.m., Maybe it's 3 p.m., but whatever it is, I tend to think that if it's first thing in the morning, you don't you won't get wrapped up in other things. Right. So you do that six minute first thing in the morning every single day. If you fall off, you don't beat yourself up. You just say, oh, I missed it. I'm going to do it now. And then I'm going to do it again in the morning. And then when you're feeling so amazing, you're going to add that to the evening. And then you may add it multiple times during the day. Then you're going to spread it out for a little longer version. Maybe it's the 20 minute version of that meditation. And then you're going to add in no need for a guided meditation. You're just going to sit quietly with your breath. So I hope that answered it without going out to too many different avenues. Thank you and for Mary, that. Would you say that process of meditation, even a short burst, even once a day, is an opportunity to reset ourselves? Yes, absolutely. You know, to completely absolutely. clear all of those worries those anxieties, those really dark thoughts that many of us are dealing with at the moment. Well, I'll tell you that six minute waterfall chakra wash is a powerhouse. Um, I, on, the, on my website, you have access there. I have other CDs and longer versions, but sometimes when you're feeling lower than low, first of all, being able to reach out and ask for help is so important. If you're feeling very desperate, then you need to reach out and ask for help. Um, the six minute waterfall chakra wash will provide and has been, I've gotten amazing testimonials how uh, that six minutes, because sometimes people can't even consider stepping into something that is half hour or 45 minutes, uh, but six minutes, they, they were able to get some relief. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for relief. So we can't go from zero to 10, being in desperation and despair, let's say that's zero, to 10, being blissful and joyful. That's that's not going to happen. But you jump up the, the rungs of the ladder each time. You're just looking for relief. And then you're looking for relief. And you're looking for relief. And when you honor that, at least that's a good place to start that six minutes. So now you're going to find relief. Oh, okay. So now I feel good. I'm going to do another one or I'm going to do a longer one. Uh, I'm going to start a gratitude journal. I'm going to be grateful for the things that I have in my life. Oh, but Lee, how can I be grateful when all this is happening in the world? How can I be grateful when all these horrible things are happening to me? Well, we start with the basics. We are grateful that we have legs to stand. We have eyes to see. We have arms to hug loved ones. We have a mouth to speak and to sing and to laugh. We go back to the basics because we end up forgetting about the basics when all of this contrast is happening in our world. But a gratitude journal is something that shifts things for you very quickly when you add that meditation element to it as well. Powerful. And Lee, would you like us to ask the audience the final poll? Oh, yes. Have prepared. Did I miss that final poll? Oh, no, you didn't miss it because I'm here to remind you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, I would love that. And that final poll is, it's are you ready to nourish yourself mindfully with self-love and self-care to reap the rewards of inner peace? Are you ready? Are you absolutely ready? Or do you need a little more help? Are you ready but need some help? Or are you not ready? And there's no wrong answer, but my intention and my hope for you is that you are ready 
And whether you need help or not, needing some assistance and support until you got it for yourself is great, is fine. Uh, being aware and knowing that you do is awesome. Well, you'll be pleased to hear, Lee, that so far, absolutely is in the lead, followed by, yes, but I need a little bit of help. No worries. That's and great. Not yet is zero. So we have, we have some really great results. And I think that your message is clearly getting through. That's awesome. That's awesome. I dare say that there are some viewers who are actually practicing mindfulness already. Wonderful. This is funny. I've got this, this light coming right in <laughs> right in the middle of my face. Um, so we're just going to, I know that we only have a few more minutes. Uh, thank you all for participating. Thank you for the questions. They were great. And if we didn't get to your question, shoot me an email, lee at leepapa.com. Uh, so you are the driver. You are the driver of your ship. Your intention is key. Mindfulness and meditation practice are your secrets. This is how you start shifting. Do the inner work of self-observation and non-judgment and self-love and self-care leads to self-mastery. And I believe in you. I know you've got this. It is not insurmountable. It just takes you to choose deliberately and step into the practice. So I love this quote from Maya Angelou. I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. And my hope is that I made you feel cared for, that I made you feel loved, and that I made you feel empowered to do this for yourself. So our last drawing of the session, drawing three, and this is for a 30 minute uh, coaching with me. So one to 10, who is our winner? Put it, start, I'm sorry, start putting in your number that you want from one to 10, one to 10, what is the magic number? Who is going to be the winner? And the winner is eight. Who is our winner? And again, um, please just send me an email and we will connect the time that is best for you. Maggie, well done. Congratulations, Maggie. And as Great we are prize. wrapping up, <laughs> pardon? Great prize, really good yeah. prize. Well, I love it. I love it. And um, I always believe that things happen exactly the way that they are supposed to. So um, if anyone needs any support, you know how to reach me. I just want to thank you so much. I want to thank uh, IMAX America. I want to thank you, Natasha and Donna and Oliver and Alex and the entire team. Uh, Planet IMAX is so exciting and so extraordinary and i'm so happy to be a part of it you know this is my sixth year with imax and their commitment to wellness and well-being is incredible and uh i feel like it's family for me so i love this every year it's like you know home week thank uh, you. so thank you well, well, it's so true. I just want you to know that there's that free booklet, Roadmap to Living Mindfully, Understanding Self-Love, Self-Care, and Self-Mastery, as well as these meditations that I told you about. These are the short meditations, Journey on the Cloud, Waterfall, Chakra Wash, Body Scan. You can access that on my website under meditations, also under shop, meditations and free. So please download those. And if you need any support, you know how to reach me. Thank, Thank you, Lee. You. I can't wait till we can be together again in person. Me and too. Do your magic, which I know everyone loves. But for now, it's so much. Thank you for me. At least we have this, right? How wonderful yeah, that we have absolutely. this virtual opportunity. And don't forget to join me tomorrow for Ride the Waves of Change. Absolutely. Okay. It's goodbye from Lee and it's goodbye from me. See you tomorrow on Planet IMAX. Good night.